Ihr Tipps. I'm here on a perfect Thursday morning. The kids are with me. It's a little chilly here. I believe the wind is blowing gales in some other parts of the country. But it is a beautiful, beautiful early winter's day here. And man, it's good to be back. It's Thursday. It's 11 o'clock. And you've got a date with me. And I'm so glad that you're all here. And uh, we're going to talk about bulbs today. So first of all, I hope your week has been good. Um, there's good news coming for most of us South Africans. Whoop, whoop, hallelujah. Um, oh, Gracie wants another chew. Hold on, hold on. We've got a break frame here, you know. Come here, my sausage. There we go. Okay. Yeah, she wants a chew. Um, the terrorist, Rolo, is in the house because he eats everything. Um, at the moment, he's yeah, bringing big clumps of soil into the house. I think he's really trying to garden. Leaves that are twice the size as him get dragged through. And the funniest thing is he tries to get through the trellis door with it. <laughs> but <laughs> he has no idea about space and dimension. <laughs> so he just bashes into the trellis door. But anyway, um, guys, it, it really is lovely to be here. And um, we have got such a show lined up for you today. Gracie, my child, I have no more treats for you, but you can just sit up here in the meantime. All right, guys, let's see who's joined us and um, let's take a look. Um, my goodness, there are loads of you here today. Um, there's Daniel, uh, Caroline. Uh, Caroline says something looks like a little alien. I don't know what you're talking about, Caroline, but that's okay. Um, Marina, welcome. Malcolm, welcome. Jill Wilson, right on you, Jilly. Um, Sue Hubachs in Waterfall. Um, We've also got Reno's back. Hello, Reno. Um, let's go and have a look here. Who else is here? Um, oh, my goodness. Lots of questions. Okay, lots of questions. We're going to be getting to those. Um, Mealybug, scale, my word. Okay, hold on. We're going to get there. We're going to get there. Who else? Wendy. Hi, Wens. Um, Leslie. I see Mr. Runkle is here. Maureen Francis. Um, Barbara, hello. Lisa Swanepoel. Hello. Um who else? Who else? Barbara Saunders. Hello, Barbara. Audrey Sutherland, good to have you back. Um, Botimelo, hello. Um, you're giving me another Zulu translation or something. You've got to like give it to me in, in English because I'm not really good at that. And it's 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 probably as bad as my Afrikaans, and I and I do apologize. Um uh, Vladimir, hello Vladimir. He's calling me by my, my nickname from school, which um only a few of you know, but uh yeah, that can be something for you guys to find out. <laughs> uh, who else is here? Carla De Brain, uh, Adel. Um, okay, Gracie Child, off you go. Uh, let's have a look who else is here this morning. Um, Lindy Foster, good morning. Brenda Fundenberg, Lynn Swanepoel, hello. Um, Ida from Nelspreit, Mary from Swellendam, um, Marion from Escort, Philippa from PMB. Thank you for keeping us gardening. Right, guys, let's get going. Let's get going. So, first of all, everybody gets really stressed out when I tell them, you must plant bulbs. They're like, oh, but those things die. And like, I can't grow them. And the moles are going to eat them. And a whole lot of other things. So, we're going to break it down and keep it really simple today. Okay, really, really simple. And... First of all, just to like wet your taste buds, just come with me. Mace, come with me here. Mace is behind the camera there. I'll show you him just now. Um, and he has got a mask on, so don't worry. Um, but look at these. Come right in here. These are little daffodils. Um, these are the mini daffodils. And they also called, and my security company is trying to phone me at the moment, but I'm telling them I'm not talking to them. So let's come back to these. These are called uh, mini daffs. They're also called tea tay. Um, and they actually are a jonquil. Now, you're going to get a whole lot of You can either call them um, narcissus, you can call them daffodils, or you can sometimes call them jonquils. 
all right so all of the names are fine but but don't really stress about that but daffodils is the name that we generally know they are all part of the narcissa family so Narcissa is the big family, like the big mama in charge of them, and underneath them are all these other species. Now, the interesting thing with daffodils is climate change has had a huge effect on, on these guys in South Africa. In fact, so much so that no longer can the breeders actually breed them to the right size and the right plumpness ready for the South African market. And all daffodils now are imported scary fact and um, some of us don't believe in climate change so the bulbs that you're seeing here these little daffs um, all bred and coming from Holland which supports a multi multi billion rand trade in bulbs um, in fact if we have to go to and talk about the most common bulb the bulb that everybody knows is the tulip and everybody always whatsapps and sends Facebook messages where can I get my tulips where can I get my tulips and we all think of tulips from Amsterdam. But are they from Amsterdam? Are they from Holland? No, they're not. Where are they from? Come on, let me see if you can guess. Let's see, where are, where are they from? I'm going to the latest page. Where are tulips from? Where are they originally from? Um, we're going to see, we're going to see. Come on, come on. Work with me, guys. Where are they from? They're definitely not from Holland, but you can go on the internet and you can look at the most amazing virtual display of Kirkenhof where there are millions of bulbs planted for the public to come and see but now of course with lockdown people can't but they're doing virtual tours and you can just sweep through the beautiful flower beds absolutely insane no one is giving me the right answer so I'm going to tell you tulips originally come from Turkey yep Turkey and I got to see the one, the tulip, like the original tulip that they were bred from. So that's a big genus, all right? And the original tulip is a dreadful looking thing. I mean, it's, it's nothing like what we see today. It's got a few little petals that open up, um, really not very grand at all. Um, and we've heard about tulip mania. In fact, tulips at one point, and I'm going back to the 1600s, one tulip bulb, one bulb would sell for more than $1,500 dollars. People's wealth was determined by a bulb, okay? So a lot of people got very rich, but then towards the end of the 16th century, about 1653, the tulip production and tulip mania just crashed, much like the oil price. It still happens today. And it crashed and people lost thousands and thousands of rands. Um, and that is where that the whole the whole thing about tulip started from um, and it still has gained momentum and every year people want to plant them but in South Africa because we are not that cold they and that's what they need tulips need very 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 cold soil and they have a very short shelf life because the little flower is already sitting in the bulb okay it's already in here before it actually starts shooting so what is important is that you need to buy them, and as soon as you've got them, you need to plant them. Really important, guys. Don't let them hang around. Don't wait. So you buy them online. You can get them from Hadeco. Go online. You can buy your tulips there, and as soon as you get them, you plant them into the garden, either into pots or straight into the soil, and we're going to talk a little bit about that in general so that you get it right, okay, because they really are easy. Okay, but let's go back one. Um, I'm going to take you back to bulbs. So what is a bulb? Well, the things that we all cook with, these beautiful guys, onions. This is a bulb, all right? Um, and a bulb is, botanically, we'll call it, is a modified storage organ. It sounds terrible, doesn't it? <laughs> anyway, it's a modified storage organ. All right, and a bulb has modified leaves. And the modified leaves actually form the scales. So if I cut this open here, Mace, come in quite close and let's have a look. So if we cut this onion bulb, okay, let's just, right, have a look here. If we cut it, all right, there we are in the half, there are the leaves. This is a modified leaf that actually forms what we call the scales. So this is a scale, and as you know, with an onion, 
you can literally cut them and remove these scales one by one. You see there? Right, there comes off a scale. And so an onion is a bulb that we're eating. So the basic terminology of a bulb, let's work with that. This is called the base plate. Now the base plate is where the dried roots normally sit. So you can identify it quite easily because people always say, which way do I plant it? This way or that way? And they sideways, upside down. Um, but you know, let's keep it really easy. So there's your base plate. Here are your dried roots from the previous season. And this is where your new roots will shoot from. They'll shoot from the base plate over there. Okay, and if we clean this up a bit, you can see that base plate really nice. Okay, nice and easy. Okay, then this part over here is the storage part. This part of the bulb, just where it starts curving here, is called the shoulder. Right, now remember that because we're going to be using that a bit later. That's the shoulder. And then, of course, this is the growing point. Right, that's where the green leaves come out. So that's a basic bulb. Right, so the other types, and um, sometimes you'll hear the word rhizome used, and sometimes you'll hear the word corm used. Not corn, not the thing that grows on your foot, no, a corm with an M. All right, so in corm, an example of a corm would be a freesia, beautiful freesias, okay. A freesia is a corm. We'll take some of these out and you can have a look at it. So... Let's have a look at these bad boys. You can see the size differs immensely um, from that guy over there. We've got some Ixias here, and look how small these little guys are. Now, this is also a, this is also a corm, which is a type of modified root. And you can see the same thing applies. There's the base plate. Okay, can you see it? Much smaller, but you get the idea. All right. There's the growing point. So if we pull that off there, let's just have a look. There we go. So there's the growing point right there. Okay. There's a shoulder just to the side. Okay. And there's the storage. Okay. So it's that's that's the general rule that you're going to be using. The same for this freesia over here. Um, there's your base plate. Come in there, Mace. There's the base plate right there. Here, the dried scales, okay, there's your growing point, all right, and if we cut this baby in half, you will see why, and the difference between a bulb and a corm, bulbs have these scales, which the onion has, which we know, and a corm doesn't, okay, the corm is just a solid mass of cells, right, but in there, do you see right in there, there's the miracle. Do you see that there? That is actually the growth point. That is where all the energy comes from. So the amazing thing about bulbs is that, folks, they've got everything in them that they need just to start growing. I mean, your onions have started growing in your veggie rack. Yeah, and you're like, ooh, how did that happen? Okay, they've got it all here because these are the storage organs. This is where all the energy sits. So all they need is a bit of light, and water and the rest is left up to this part over here quite quite amazing um, the beauty about about bulbs as well is that and I've always I've always used this this example and it probably is quite apt in fact more apt than any other time of our lives is that people say well I plant a bulb and then oh well you know, it, it's going to flower and then it's going to die and then I'm not going to see it next year. Well, some bulbs do that, but let's consider holidays. Let's consider a holiday. So we save up for a holiday. That's when we could go on holiday. We save up to go on a holiday. We go away for a week. We enjoy it. Sun, cocktails, sea, sex. Did I say that? Yes. All in, all in that beautiful holiday time. And then we go home. And what do we have? You've got memories. You've got beautiful memories. And we will revert back to that and we will talk about it. And that's the same with these guys. That is the beauty of bulbs. Bulbs are a surprise. You plant them in the garden from nothing. You plant them from these dried up things. And you think, how is it possible? I mean, these are Dutch irises. You plant these guys, plant them in the garden, and all of a sudden, two weeks later, 
up comes the little guy, starts sprouting. And then two months, maybe even a month and a half later, bang, it flowers. And that is the beauty. That is the pure surprise. Because sometimes we forget where we planted them. <laughs> True story. True story. But we're going to get to a tip on quickly how to look after them and how to make sure that you remember where you've planted them um, in a few minutes. Now, a lot of people say to me, Tanya, what about moles? Okay, I want to deal with this once and for all. <clears throat> Excuse me, and get it over and done with. So if you do have moles in your garden and you want to plant, you want to plant bulbs, then I've got some solutions for you. Hang on one second. I want to grab it from here. Right. Do you see this plastic pot? All right, this plastic pot, drainage holes. It's actually a pot that's used for aquatic plants. So you, you would put your, um, your water lily or whatever and you dunk this into the pond. But it works brilliantly as an anti-mole as well. Most garden centers sell these. Um, go along to the pot section and you'll be able to pick them up. So you plant the bulb in here, all right, with your soil normally. And we're going to go through that step by step. Plant it and you bury this whole thing. Bang. Guess what? Ga -dang, ga -dang, ga -dang. <laughs> He's not going to go anywhere. He is not going to eat the bulb. All right, nice and simple. Then at the end of the bulb season, you can either leave it in the ground or you can take it out, all right? And we'll get to that. The other way with molds, if you don't want to go to the expense of getting some plastic pots, what you can do is dig your hole in the garden, wherever you want to plant them. So dig your hole, prepare your soil, and on preparation, here it is. And listen up carefully. If you're planting bulbs in the garden, you want to dig it down to at least 30 centimeters. Turn the soil over, nice and friable, all right? What does that mean? Loose, all right? Because if you've got a little dried up guy like this, and you're going to plant it in hard rock soil, guys, it's like common sense. It ain't going to do so well. Whereas if you've loosened the soil, and remember, all bulbs, and I'm going to say 99% of bulbs need loose, friable, well-drained soil, okay? So, if you've got quite a heavy clay soil, please add in some grit. And when I talk about grit, I'm talking about some river sand, um, some amgani sand, some coarse compost. Add that in so that you get a nice grit, because that also helps with the drainage. So you're gonna pop this little guy in, all right? But the molds, as we've dug the soil, we take that soil out. You get chicken mesh, okay? You know, little chicken mesh? Buy a meter or two of that, Lay it down, okay, in the hole, coming right up to the edges. Because moles are quite clever, hey, they go and then they do like hurdles over. And then they jump in and then they have a party in there with your bulbs. Okay, so you have your chicken mesh there. The bulbs are in the inside. You've now planted them. You cover them. Bob's your uncle. No mole will get in there. Even an anorexic mole through a little hole like this in the chicken mesh. And that works wonders, guys absolute wonders so i don't want to hear any more nonsense about about i can't plant bulbs because i got mouths we've given you um, a great great um, alternative and and a different reason and how you can use it and as a solution okay right mm, need some coffee how are you all doing here let's just check where's this how do i put this thing on oh she went to sleep okay no it's coming back on i think is it mm, wait i'm not very good at this Okay, oh, make it come on. Oh, look, there we go. That's how we make it come on. Mm. Mm. No one's home. Ah, oh, look, there. Now everybody's home. Okay, um, let's just have a look here. Okay, so we've got all the, we've got all that. You, you sorted, right. Okay, now, what I want to go to next um, who else has just joined? I want to see who else has joined so we can say good morning. Tiffany! Tiffany, watching from Joburg um, with seven-year-old Sophie, who's crazy about succulents. Good job, good job. Um, we've got Mary from Swellendam. Good to have you with us. Um, who else? Michelle from the South Coast. Ivongo, beautiful time on the South Coast. Um, no wind, beautiful sea. Um, oh, best time, best time. Uh, Carol... Uh, Lurusha Govender, um, Andy, hello, Robin Bentley from PE, um, wonderful, wonderful to have you all with us. Okay, so now folks, 
We've done the mole thing, okay? We've spoken about DAFs. Now what I want to speak to you very briefly about is what else can we do with bulbs besides growing them just in the garden? And this is where it gets really, really interesting because there are loads of bulbs that you can take and you can plant them into, look at this here, in a beautiful vase with some of these little clay pellets, which I'll call brocatoni. These are them here. Um, they come in a bag like this. They work wonders. Um, and what I love about it is that they never disappear. You know, they never break down and turn into compost. They're perfect for this. You can recycle them. You can wash them again. And you get them in beautiful colors. So this is um, Lika clay that basically in these little balls has then been, air has been inserted into them. So they kind of blow up. They're incredibly light. So they've got lots of air pockets in them. And what happens is when you add water to it, they change color. So the water actually gets absorbed. I'm just going to put some water on here, May, so we can have a look. There we go. Have a look at that. So the clay actually, because it's, it's normal, it's natural clay, it sucks up the water, okay, and then this helps to feed your bulb. So you can use this as a mulch, you know, around your indoor pot plants. Um, you can use it to grow your bulbs in, which is what we've done here. And I want to show you these two examples. So this is the little daffodil. And we all, do we all know the story about how it, how the daffodil ended up being called a narcissa? Um, well, it, story goes back, and that's one of the Greek, Greek god stories. Um, there was a, a beautiful, beautiful, handsome, strapping young lad that was, um, called Narcissus and he was wandering around in the forest and he was so beautiful that he was told there was one thing he could never look at himself and he could never admire himself because it was a gift that the gods had given him this beauty and uh, there was one th there was one thing and that was that he couldn't look at himself and uh, anyway the story goes that uh, the, he was trundling through the forest, and he, I think he was listening to some M&M on his, on his um, iPhone or whatever, and uh, he came across this nymph, and he fell in love with the nymph. She was so beautiful. Um, but then it didn't quite work out, so he got sad, and he was lonely, and he was feeling all like depressed. So he went down to the water's edge, and what did he do? He looked into the water and he saw his reflection, and he fell in love with himself. And that is why they called him. That is why, and oh, oh, then, 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 hold on, the story doesn't end then. Because he looked in, the, in the, the pond, the reflection was there, the spell kicked in, and he turned into a, into a little wind, into a breeze. And so that's why Narcissus was named, that's why the, the psychologists, the people say, you are narcissist because you fell in love with yourself. And in his place, where he stood on the water's edge, what did they say grew? A beautiful daffodil. And that's where the name comes from. Um, interesting history behind all of these, and they've all got a story. Everyone has a story. But let's get back to the brocatoni, because that's what I'm actually talking about. So the brocatoni, how do you do it? Simply here, look at this, we've got a vase. Look at all these beautiful roots. Now in here is also a daffodil. Look at all these healthy roots. So you pop it onto the brocatoni, and you can see, look at these roots, they're nice and sturdy. I mean, they've worked their way all in through the little brocatoni here. And then what you do is pop your bulbs on and then fill it with water, but never fill the water to go above the base plate. Remember, we learned about that. The base plate is the bottom where the roots come out. Never fill the water above that. If you do fill it above that, the bulb will rot. Okay, but what bulbs can you do it with? So we can do it with beautiful daffs like this. We can do it with the mini little teates. Um, here's another little hyacinth. Come in here, Mace, and take a look at that. Um, look at this little guy in here. Also, there he's nice and tight, setting up. And look, his flower is already coming through. Looking amazing. All right, other bulbs that you can grow in water. Beautiful little chinkery cheese. Okay, now chinkery cheese are indigenous. Um, there are over 50 species of chinkery cheese, um, or their botanical name is called Ornithogolum, 
terrible word. I mean, just, just remember chinkery cheese. And um, look how small they are. Look at these new, new little things. And you would not believe, I mean, look at that, size of my pinky nail. You would not believe that one little bulb like this will produce three to four flower spikes. So very, very simple. Plant it, keep it well watered once a week in a sunny spot, and up it comes. Now, chinkery cheese, oh, and another thing I want to show you. If all else fails, read the instructions for goodness sake, because on the back of the bulb packet, it tells you how tall it's going to get, how deep to plant it, how far apart to plant it, and that's quite amazing, because we buy these things and we get home, and it's like, <clears throat> okay, yeah, I'm going to plant them, and then you take them and you shove them like 20 centimeters under the soil, and you wonder why the thing never comes up because like it's been buried. It's been buried like you're trying to get rid of your mother-in-law. All right, no. This is a beautiful, delicate, gorgeous bulb that we want to make sure is going to be in the happiest spot. So as a general rule of thumb, the bulb, the height of the bulb, you should bury the bulb, double the depth of the bulb. Does that make sense? Okay, double the depth. So this little freesia, there's our height, Double the depth. So there, it should go down there. One, two. That should be it. Okay, does that make sense? That's your general rule. But guys, they all come with instructions, okay? And I know we're really bad at reading instructions. It's like trying to connect the DVD to the How's Your Father, to the to the whatever, and you've got 17 remotes, and you never read the instructions. Um, or it's like when you're putting together one of those DIYs, um, that have been imported from China with Chinese instructions that have been changed into English and it makes no sense at all. And you left with, you put the thing together and at the end of it you're left with like three screws and maybe a, a bracket and you're like, oops, you know, okay, and it never really works out. So just read the instructions, please, please, please. Okay, so ornithogalums, chinkery cheese, where do they get their name from? Chinkery cheese, indigenous, endemic to the Western Cape, down there, that belt, all right, which means they're like really sandy soil, okay, sandy soil. So if you've got that clay soil, remember what I said, add in some grit, some river sand, um, or even some um, pool filter sand. Um, that works particularly well because it's got those rough edges, really, really nice. These guys can grow in water, and where do they get their name from? When the flowers have dried, okay, and it said when the wind blows and the flowers scratch against each other. That's the noise they make. Chinkery chee. Okay, not quite. I probably sound like a dying bird or parrot, but you know what I mean. Okay. <laughs> anyway, chinkery cheese, guys, I love them. And many of you actually buy bunches of flowers with them in. And you don't even know what it is because they've got the most beautiful fragrance. They last forever and ever. And I mean six, seven, eight, nine weeks they will last in a vase. True story. They'll even start shooting little roots. Um, they just go on and on forever. So in the garden, they're fabulous. Um, cut them and use them in the vase, and they, uh, they're just wonderful. And the great thing also about chinkery cheese is that you don't have to take the bulbs out of the garden, all right? You don't have to take them out. You can leave them in there, and they will just continue. Next year, they'll come up again. Just remember where you planted them, okay? Remember where they are. Don't go saying, oh, look, I've got a dead patch. I need to quickly plant something, and I know we've all done it. In goes the fork or the spade, and out comes half a bulb attached to the spade, and you're like, oops. Oh dear, okay. So one way of doing it, take some um, barbecue sticks, poke that into the ground, put a naked garden gnome on top of the bulbs where they are so that you remember where they are. Um, another trick that you can also do is just take a little golf tee, all right? Take a little golf tee and pop that into the ground because then you know where they are, okay? So we've all made that mistake of digging up the poor bulbs. What else can we grow in water? So we've got the daffodils, we've got the ornithogalums, and of course we've got beautiful hyacinths. Okay, now I'm going to open up the hyacinths here so that you can have a look. Ah, nice. Oh, look at it, look at it, look at this little green shoot there. All right, there's its base stem, base plate, okay. There's the shoulder up here, all right. Here are the scales. So just as we did here, um, Come down to here, Mace, 
when we would plant it, we would put it just on top of our brocatoni, just like that. All right, and that's it. Easy. I mean, it can't be more difficult than that. That's like really simple stuff. And they can grow in water and you can grow them inside as long as there's a bit of light. You want at least four hours of light um, if you want to grow your hyacinths indoors. And guys, I want to show you here. Um, I want to go to the back there. So I'm going to just take my phone quickly and give you a little, a little show here um, of what these guys do. Come and look here. Oh, my goodness. There's Amy. Look at the child. Oh, passed out. But take a look here, guys. This is, this is spectacular. This is a hyacinth. They are so heady. They have the most beautiful, beautiful perfume. Um, this hyacinth, take a look here, is planted in soil. All right. It's got a bit of sphagnum moss around it. This moss is gorgeous. This moss is really spectacular to use um, as a little mulch. Um, and just decoratively as well around your pots, especially if you're going to have them somewhere like here on this mantelpiece. All right. Um, hyacinths have individual little waxy flowers. Um, they come in blues, purples, pinks, and white. Um, they flower for a long time. Um, and even these little flowers, if you take them off once they've finished flowering and they almost start drying out, just pick it off and put them in a bowl of water. They are spectacular. They absolutely look gorgeous. They've got these strappy leaves and not many leaves as opposed to this major flower that is coming out of it here. About five to seven leaves per bulb, and you can see how it's planted here, just at the shoulder, you see there, into the soil, and there we go. But they are spectacular. Um, I really do love them, and I wish that you could smell it. They're spectacular. Gorgeous and heady and absolutely beautiful. All right. Okay, let me go back here. Let me go back here. There's Mace. Hello, Mace. Okay, interesting story about hyacinths. Um, uh, hyacinths also got their name from the, from the Greek gods. Um, very interesting story, this. In fact, it could go probably end up in like a Jilly Cooper movie or a book. You know, you know she writes those very interesting books, you know. Uh, anyway, um, so there were two Greek gods. There was Apollo and there was some other fella. Um, who was the Greek god of the West Wind. And they, these two men, particularly liked this um, Greek man, and his name was Hikinos. Okay. And um, so they were teaching him how to throw the discus, as one does back then, you know, teaching him to throw the discus. And, uh, and the Greek god of the West Wind got very jealous of Apollo because he was paying him more attention. <laughs> Can you believe it? This is like the making of, of the bold and the beautiful. Um, and anyway, he got very, very jealous. So the Greek god of the West blew the discus. And it came around and it whacked poor Hikinos, all right, on the head and killed him. Bang. And it said in the, in the mythology that where he died, up came this beautiful hyacinth. So... Hikinos, as his name was, and that's where the word hyacinth comes from. Very interesting. Choose it, believe it, use it. Great for when we can. It's a great story for when we can once again go to dinner parties. You know, you can tell that story again and people think you're very, 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 very clever indeed. All right. So hyacinths can be grown in there. What else can be grown in water? Um, I'm going to get to one which is probably one of our South African all-time favorites. And if you haven't grown any, grow them. They're called waterblomities. Ah. And when you're down in the Western Cape, um, late winter, early spring, um, especially early in the mornings, and you're seeing the guys in there with their, their waders, and they're going into the dams, and they're actually picking off the waterblomities. You can take these guys, get a beautiful terracotta pot, plug up the holes with some... Uh, what's that stuff called? Silicone, you know, silicone gel. Use that, plug up the holes, put in some water, throw your bulbs in. That's all you do. Throw the bulbs in there, all right? And they are going to grow and create beautiful waterblomikis with also a wonderful fragrance. And of course, what do you do with them? Well, you pick them, you fry some onion, a bit of garlic, some thyme, some tomatoes, let it sweat down, and you add your vata into it, man, 
boom, bang. And that with a fat cook, oh, is delicious. And of course, for me, a little green chili, and you've got Vata Blomiki Bredi, and it is yum, yum, yum. I will never forget my brother um, who lives in the Western Cape. Uh, every time he comes home over that period, he brings me Vata Blomikis, and it is ritual. We have to cook Vata, we have to cook Vata Blomiki Bredi, um, and uh, and it's wonderful. It's it's got a quite a, a fleshy because it's quite a thick. It's got quite a fleshy um, uh, leaves to it. But when you mix that in with the onions and the garlic, whew, and a bit of thyme, it is fantastic. All right, so that's Vata Blomikis. Where can you get these bulbs, guys? It's very simple. You can go to my online store, tanyafissa.com, and you can buy all of these bulbs that I'm talking to you about. You can also get the Brocatoni. And remember, the Brocatoni is recyclable, so don't throw it away when the bulb is finished. Please keep the Brocatoni. Just wash it, put it into a little Tupperware, and keep it aside for when you want to use it the next time. Okay. Right. Sip of coffee, and uh, let's see uh, what's going on here. Who else has joined us? Um... So turn on this thing. Can you make this machine work, please? You see, Isolde needs to make the machine work. Oh, there we go. Oh, look there. There, the machine's working now. Um, <laughs> I'm not very good with these things, as you all know already. Um, let's go over here. Uh, gotta, 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 where we are, where we are. What page haven't I been to? Um, let's go and see. Um, there's Sherry from Germiston. Um... Ooh, do, 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 do. Who else? Um, Annika, watching from Botswana. Good on you. I hope you're having some gorgeous weather. Um, who else have we got here? Jenny from Cape Town. Hello, Jenny from Cape Town. Uh, glad that you're with us. Um, we've got... Who else have we got here? Uh, Wendy, watching from Four Ways in Joburg. Um, oh... Oh, yeah, 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 one of my favorite parts, favorite parts. Brenda, hello from George. Georg. Yeah, I've always wanted to say, hello, George. Um, <laughs> yes, my own madness. Okay, let's go and see who else has joined us here. Um, e -de 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 -de. Audrey missed the live chat because she was busy. No, Audrey, you've got to get your priorities straight. You're not going to be busy. All right. Um... And we've got Bernard saying hello, excellent. Um, Jill, um, enjoying the videos. Thank you, Jill. And Jenny McNabb, Thomas, so, thanks so much for your positive outlook. Um, yeah, we've got to stay positive or else we'll go seriously mentally mad. Worstest, worstest. Okay, right, guys, let's get back to this here. Let's just talk about what you can do with the bulbs. Uh, Mace, are you surviving there? Right, Mesa's okay. Mesa's behind the camera. Thank you very much to my techies. I've got Warwick, who's turned the dining room into like a studio. And I've got Megs next to him, um, making sure that everything is running. And I've got Isolde running around, helping me to make this computer talk. Because I'm very, very bad at that, as you've all worked out already. So, quick thing. Let's talk about if you've got a balcony, a patio. You don't have a big garden. Well, can you still have the bulbs? Yes. Look what we've done here. This is peace in the home. So it's a piece in the home pot, okay? It's been growing beautifully. But what we did was, a couple of weeks ago, we took one of these things, and they stay there, I'm gonna show you, which is a bulb planter, a dibbler, all right? You take that, you poke a hole in the center of your plant, push it down, turn it round a bit like that, turn it round, and then pop the bulb in, all right? So an existing plant you can do that with, um, just like we've done here with the piece in the home, Beautiful. Here's another example. Take a look here. Oh, and I wish that you could smell this. This is beautiful alisum. Now, this would be for a pot that grows out in the sun, on your patio, getting at least six hours of sunlight a day. And I want you to take a look at it because this, it's like honey, guys. It's, oh, it's so, oh, wow, making my day. It's, it's honey, it's heady, it's sweet, sweet, sweet. Um, alisum, you buy in those little trays, all right? So you plant your bulbs. Plant your bulbs in your soil, in the pot. Then on top of it, okay, on top of it, you plant the allison, which means that as the bulbs are starting to shoot, all right, instead of having just bare soil, as the bulbs are starting to shoot, so you've got this beautiful allison as a carpet on top of the pot. Lovely. What happens then when these finish, finish flowering? They then die back, 
these will start turning brown, they die back. If you think they're looking ugly, take a pill because you've got to let them die back. It's really important because when they start dying back, all the energy starts going back into the bulb. It's got to drain back into the bulb for next season. If you chop them off while it's still green, all the energy you've just chopped off in the leaves, okay, and basically thrown that away. So if it looks ugly, take the leaves and just tie them in a knot, okay, it works beautifully and it looks good. Allow them to stay there till they're nice and brown and then because they've got to that point where they're so brown, they've almost started removing themselves from the bulb. You then just grab it, yank it and you pull the dried leaves off. Your allison keeps growing, yep, okay, and the next season they'll surprise you and pop up. Isn't that cool? Okay, so you, you see what I'm saying as an example. This is if you had planted it, all right, within the soil. So you'd planted it in a low bowl, um, but instead of having some violas, which are these, which also work beautifully when you're, when you're planting your bulbs instead of your alisum, we've just used some sphagnum moss. Now, if we dig around in here, so this is our mulch, okay? This is our mulch, which is the sphagnum moss, and, it, and it's fantastic because it just finishes it off, okay? And it keeps the top layer of soil nice and moist. It traps in the moisture, which is really good for the bulbs. Um, but if we dig around here, we'll find, oh, there we go, there we go. Where is it, where is it, where is it? There's one of our little bulbs, okay? See, we haven't buried him too deep because we followed the instructions. So there he's sitting, and all he's waiting for is a bit of moisture, a bit of sunlight, and then he'll start popping through. So we just cover the little boy up, cover him back, okay, and there we have it. All right, nice and easy, guys. It really is incredibly, incredibly simple. Okay, next thing I want to show you is in planting. Now, we showed you this, this dibbler guy, okay, we showed you this guy. This is, so in your garden, if you've got some loose soil, you've loosened your soil up, you're going to pop this guy in there, wiggle him around, and that's where you're going to pop the, bu the bulb. Obviously, following the instructions as to how deep to put them, okay? Yeah, don't forget that part. The other way that you can do it is using one of these bulb planters, okay? Now, this works really nicely if you want to put them into an existing garden bed. Okay, so you take this guy, you shove it into the soil, all right, quite deep. Shove it into the soil, pull it out. When you pull it out, the soil comes with it. The soil comes with the bulb, all right. Uh, you haven't put the bulb in yet. Listen to me, I'm going mental. Push it into the soil, pull it up, and the soil comes in here. Then you press this little guy here, okay. You press that, and you see it opens it over there. Opens it there. The soil then falls out, but back into the hole. So you've loosened it. You've now just loosened the soil. So instead of having to take a garden fork and go and dig in there, you just simply use the bulb planter. Shove it in, pull it out, push that there. The soil comes out nice, loose and friable, and then you can plant your little bulb in there. And it works really nicely if you want to do something different and you want to plant some bulbs in amongst your lawn. Why not? You could make little fairy rings. Okay, so how do you do it? You map it out, maybe with a bit of flour. Okay a little bit of flower where you want your fairy rings going out and out and out use your bulb planter stick it in get it out put your bulbs in there remember don't mow so leave that area to become a little bit wild maybe near a tree or something um, or the edge of a garden bed and you'll have these little clusters of bulbs just popping out um, during the late winter and early spring and it's beautiful it's magical absolutely magical alrighty guys um, other bulbs I want to talk about very quickly mm. are these over here. So let's get them and let's put them over here. But before that, we're going to do a few questions. So let's go to some questions here. Um, they've got a mealybug problem. Raino, 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 let's, let's get Raino up on the screen there. Raino's got a mealybug problem. How often should I treat them? And must I keep them out the sun? Well, Raina, I don't know what you're talking about. What do you need to... Oh, you want to treat the mealybugs. Okay, not the plant. All right. So mealybug, Raina, it, it is quite difficult to get rid of. Um, what does mealybug look like? It looks like little bits of cotton wool. Um, small little bits of cotton wool, and they grow along the stems of the plant. Very common in indoor house plants um, because where there's lack of air circulation. Or if a plant is stressed, you're going to find mealybug there. You can actually just wipe it off. Get a bit of cotton wool bit of lukewarm water and you can actually just wipe it off the plant. 
comes off nice and easily. Or else you can use a general insecticide. Um, for indoor house plants, use it as a half strength, please. Um, and on your bulbs too, if you do have mealybug. But that's a good thing with bulbs, you know. Pretty tough. In fact, they get very little wrong with them. Very, very little wrong with them. So, Reina, I hope that that hel helps with your question. Um, let's have a look. Uh, mini, mini force, mini, mini. What are you saying here? Can you use the grass cuttings instead of mulch? Good question. Yes, you can, as Obama said. Yes, you can. Because grass mulch, in fact, is one, or grass clippings, it's one of the best mulches. And it's free, guys. It's free. And around my garden, um, all over, as I'm standing here and looking out there, we take the grass clippings as we've cut the lawn. We take it, we empty the grass box onto the flower beds where there's bare soil, and we use that as a mulch. It then starts drying, dying, okay, and then adding in and eventually turning into compost, into good organic matter that gets added into the soil. One, one tip though, and listen carefully, please don't make your layer of green grass clippings too thick, all right, on top of your soil. If it's too thick, it sometimes compacts and, and almost forms like this layer, like, uh, like duck's feathers. And when you water, the water just runs off it. So just don't make it too thick. So the remainder that you've got, throw that on, throw that onto the compost heap because then it works equally as well. And you're actually just not wasting it. Um, so yes, grass clippings can get used. And if you've planted your bulbs and you're looking for a mulch, instead of the sphagnum moss, okay, that we spoke about, use your grass clippings, right? It's fine. It does the job. I mean, who wants to go and use expensive sphagnum moss um, that you buy in a little packet like this in amongst your garden bed? So good question, and, and I hope that helped. All right, um, who else are we going to find a question for? Let's go to page four. Let's see, let's see, let's see, let's see. Um, Depends. Oh, no, we're answering questions here. Wait, where are we going to? Where are we going to? Okay. Um, doo -doo 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 -doo. What? Jenny. Jenny, you've got a sad story. Jenny, what are you telling me? Um, I moved to Sienekal in the free state from Gauteng. It's so hot here. Water is scarce. What do I plant? No one has gardens here. Well, Jenny, then you've got to start a movement. Okay, and the movement means, you know, like people toy toy and, you know, like you have movements and you're going to do mass action. You've got to start mass action in Senecal. Why don't you start your own little garden club, get a group of ladies together or men or children. I don't care what they are. There must be like minded people that would want to come and garden with you. So get them together. You can share videos on YouTube. You can learn. Um, and what can you plant? It gets very cold in Senecal. So bulbs will love it. They love the cold temperatures, which is in fact why, I mean, tulips, you could grow tulips there, absolutely. You could also grow daffodils, you could grow spiraxis, tritonias, ixias, you could grow them all. And remember, whenever you're shopping for plants, just remember to ask your local garden centre how cold hardy and frost hardy are these plants. Okay, very important. All right, yeah, let's go and have a look here. Let's see if we've got another question. Um... Uh, do, 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 do. do you put any soil? Okay, hold on. Alexandra, let's see. What is your question? Alexandra, join too late. It's okay. You're right here. Relax. Take a chill pill. I hope you've got your coffee and you are calm and with us. Alexandra Big, the question is, join late. Do you put any soil in the seedling tray for propagating or just as it is? So, Alexandra, I think you might be talking about the, um, the, the uh, block of of peat moss, of, of, of moss that we use, um, which is that, that block um, from stark airs, which you add water to and then it swells. No, you don't need to add anything else to it. You just use that. That is all you use in your seedling tray for seed germination, and it works like a bomb. So don't stress about that, okay? Um, let's go to another page here. Let's go and see. Um, am I right in saying that we're up to page 19 here? Um, our last question is from Lisa from uh, Somerset West. That's all I've got up on my screen here. Um, and we've got, Annika's watching from Botswana. Did I say that? Yeah, I'm amazed. Um, someone's watching. Alison's watching from Singapore. Ali, hello, my darling friend. How are you? And we've got Carol watching from Chatsworth. Um, 
Any questions on bulbs, guys? Um, let's cook in here. Let's go in here and have a look over here. Um, where do I get my... <laughs> <laughs> I've got to put this one up. Um, uh, Mariana wants to know, uh, where do I get, um, where do I buy my tops from? Um, Mariana, I buy them wherever I go. Generally, they're from the men's department, true story. I then take them to my, my tailor lady and she cuts them and nips them and tucks them. You know how it goes, you know. Um, but yes, they only make these bright bolt shirts for boys and men. I don't get it. So somebody should start a craze. Uh, <laughs> um, all right, Adele's got a question. Let's go to Adele Stander. Um, Adele says, if you have a hole in a rock or a stone, what would you suggest to add compost with some river sand and still feed it? And I've got an interesting picture in my head here. I've got a rock with a hole in it. Yes, okay. So Adele, what you want to do is you want to add a mixture, put in... Um, 50% compost, 50% uh, potting soil into your mixture, okay? Um, and then you can plant in there. Remember, of course, because it's stone, it's going to drain quite quickly. Um, if it's sandstone, it is going to drain really quickly. If it is another hard, um, almost like marble-like stone, like basalt, it's not. So what you're watering, you don't want to overwater the plants that you're putting in there, okay? So you don't want to drown them. Um, but yes, and what can you put in there? Oh, you could put all sorts. You could put some succulents in. You could put a nice ground cover that would cascade over the edge. Um, but I'd probably stick with like Fahey's Fet Planter because that's where you see them growing naturally. You know, when you walk up a bit of a, of a cliff or whatever and you see the plants just hanging in the little crevices, that would be really nice. Okay, um, right guys. Um, I was going to start talking about some of these, um, some of these bulbs over here. All right, so I want to talk to you about freesias. Freesias, beautifully fragrant, lovely. We all get given them as gifts and cut flower bunches, but grow them yourself. Um, freesias are indigenous, and um, there are more than 18, more than 18 species of freesias which are indigenous to the Western Cape, so they do incredibly well here in our gardens. Once again, turn over the soil, pop the little guys in, follow the instructions, a good watering every three to four days. That's it. A good watering every three to four days, deep watering, all right? And then they're going to come through. As you've planted, and this is a general rule, as you've planted all your bulbs, please get some of this, okay? It's bulb food, right? Now, I've told you already that the bulbs have everything in them. But to help them get along, we've got some bulb food, which has got NPK in it, nitrogen, phosphate, and potassium. All right, and all you do is take this out here. It's got a little zip seal thingy here. All right, sprinkle some of the, the bulb food on the top of the soil, all right, around the bulb, and then water it in. You do that once a month as your bulbs are growing. That's from planting once a month, and that'll ensure that you're going to have really gorgeous flowers um, and a great great late winter early spring bulb bulb season very very important okay the ranunculus oh ranunculus okay so now ranunculus are an anomaly and i want to show you the bulb they are the strangest looking characters look at them they're weird aren't they what are they they're like they're like spiders or something now a ranunculus is it's a very interesting bulb um because a ranunculus ranunculi you plant upside down practically so when you're planting a ranunculus you plant it claws down okay that is the only one that doesn't kind of follow your your normal thinking because it doesn't have a base plate these are the roots from last season okay and you can see they're the little root hairs so if you follow the logic it will tell you and then out over here starts the new the new stem ranunculus are beautiful big, fluffy, loads of petals, great for cut flowers as well, and they just do a fantastic job. Okay, we've got Tritonias, also indigenous. I think they're about, probably about 28 species of Tritonias, also endemic to the Western Cape, so they love that sandy soil. So your soil can be really rubbish, I mean, and they'll grow. And because they're indigenous, they're more than likely to come up year 
after year after year. And these can also do with a bit of semi shade. Um, the flower of these, uh, the flower spike gets to about 40, 40 centimeters in height. Um, and they're lovely. They're nice and whimsical to have in between your border beds or even in pots. These are my favorite spiraxis. They have to be my favorite. You remember, remember when we were growing up, we could get those, those little kaleidoscope things that you'd, you'd put on your eye and it was this long thing like a tube and you could turn it. And as you turned it, um, you got all these different colors. And when I look into spiraxis, um, zoom in there, Mace, go in there. When you look into spiraxis, that's what you see. You see that kaleidoscope. Um, spiraxis, also indigenous, really tough guys. Plant them because they're beautiful. Um, and they, they flower so easily. And that's what I don't get. I mean, I kind of get upset. Um, but they, they, they flower so easily. They're just beautiful. Okay, let's go one step right to the end. Our bulbs have grown. They flowered. They're looking beautiful. They've died back. All right, what do we do now? Do we leave them in the garden or do we dig them out? Two things you can do. One, remember I said you can leave them in the garden. Preferably, I'm going to tell you, dig them out. Okay? Because then you've got no chance of stabbing them and maiming them with a fork or a spade or something. Dig them out, all right, once they've dried back all the way down. Dig them out, shake off the soil, and put them in a brown paper packet, all right, or in a cardboard box, a shoe box, and put them into a dark cupboard. That's where they need to live, in a dark cupboard until next season, this time, when you'll take them out and you'll plant them again. Okay. So that's the easy part about storage. Really nice and simple. Um, let's see who else we've got on the line here. Um, ooh, okay. Uh, do, 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 do. I want to ask if we can, oh, let's have a look here. I want to ask if we can grow daffodils on the coast. Will they flower? Good question. Okay, so my mom lived on the coast, um, on the south coast in a little village called Pennington. And... She loved bulbs. She loved bulbs. But, you know, on the coast, people say, oh, you can't grow them, you can't grow them. Yes, you can. She used to grow them in pots. And, in fact, the one pot that I've got here is still from my late mom. And you know what? The daffodils still pop up. Um, they might not have as big a flower from the first season that you planted them, but they will flower for you. So, yes, you can. Um, you can absolutely grow them. Um, Shani, um, Shannon Lee from Pochestrum. Hello. Oh, these are from YouTube. Um, and what else have I got here? Kerry from the South Coast. Um, oh, and my brother's on. Morning sister from the West Coast, Port Owen. How are my roses looking? You know, I have to look after my brother's rose garden because he used to live here. Long story, but mwah, love you, Sean. And your roses are looking fair, by the way, and I'll send you pictures later this afternoon. Anyway, guys, that is the A to Z of bulbs in 45 minutes. Bang, finished. Bottom line is, they're easy. They really are. Come on, challenge yourself. Get out there and give it a try. Um, they, they work. They give you such joy. And the fact is that it's a surprise. And if you haven't believed in anything or in anybody greater than us, if you just need to look at a bulb and know that with a bit of water and a bit of light, they will produce such beautiful, mag magnificent flowers, then you'll know that there's someone greater than us in charge of everything. Guys, till next week, please be safe. Um, look after you and yours. Get out into the garden. It's the best therapy. And if you really want good therapy, get out there and weed. Put your berm, your derriere on the ground and do some weeding. It really does help the mind. It clears the body and soul. Um, I really, really appreciate all of you joining me. Remember to please go and download the latest issue of The Gardener magazine, which is now the June issue. It's on The Gardener website, so go there, have a look at it. Please support us and download it. Um, thank you all so much. Take care of you and yours, and most importantly, happy gardening. Thank you. Hi guys, I'm Tanya Fisser from The Gardener and Detainee magazines, and have I got some COVID-19 therapeutic relief for you. Unfortunately, we haven't been able to print your favorite gardening magazine, but relax, we've got a plan. The Gardener and Detainee magazines are now available online. Simply visit thegardener.co.za and follow the easy prompts to have your June edition digitally delivered to your inbox. Whether you're a seedling and gardening or a gardening guru, get all the latest gardening inspiration, how-tos right at your fingertips.
and get even more gardening for less with our Bumper June combined digital issue. And that, folks, is gardening therapy at your fingertips.